grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Ray can testify that I'm pretty lousy when the driver. <laughs> no, you're all right. <laughs> but I do enjoy the intricacies of golf. I love the fact that no matter how good you are, you've still got a lot to learn um, in golf. It can be a frustrating sport, uh, but it's something I very much enjoy. But it's interesting, golf is not a team sport. It's not a team sport. And in fact, sometimes you go to the, the, um, the golf range, or, or, uh, yeah, the golf range, and you see people whacking the ball. But very seldom do you see somebody having a round of golf on their own. Jesus, when he sent his disciples out, understood that we operate better when we're in a team. Jesus understood that when we are sent out, when we are commissioned for the mission that he has for us, that he doesn't want us to be lone rangers. He wants us to work together. He wants us to work as a team. Even Jesus himself didn't do things on his own. He had his disciples around him. Think about Gethsemane. You know, if I was facing that sort of trauma and I knew what was to come, in some respects, I would probably want to be just on my own. And yet he begged his friends, come, sit, watch and pray with me. Jesus constantly surrounded himself with people. He didn't do things on his own. What's more, he completely and utterly depended on his heavenly father. So often in the Gospels you see where Jesus is about to go into a place, into a new territory. He's going to go in and do some healing or he's going to be doing some preaching. He'll spend hours or he'll spend days beforehand just in prayer. Connecting to his heavenly father. Being energized. Jesus says that we were meant to do stuff in teams. So that we can be encouraged, so that we can be inspired, so that we can use each other's gifts, but also so we can be motivated. If I've made a commitment to somebody else, I'm more motivated to do it than if I've just got to depend on my own self-discipline. Is that true for you too? Certainly is true for me didn't work with the gym. I tried that a few times and it didn't matter what I did. I couldn't get myself there. But I know, pe- I know people who say, there's no way that I could get up in the morning and go for a training run or I could do this on my own. But if I've got a friend to encourage me and if we're mutually responsible to one another, then we go and do it. It's like a football team. Can you imagine if the coach just said, look, whenever you feel like it, go and do some training. Do you know football players? Do you really reckon, have you seen their self-discipline on the weekend? Do you think that they'd go, sure, coach, what I'll do is I'll make sure I do this. I'll do these routines, I promise you. Things happen more effectively, more efficiently. We motivate each other. We can depend on one another when we work as a team. Now, this is true. I mean, even the world knows this. Um, my daughter is a, uh, um, you know, she's been a teacher now for a couple of years. And she said what she couldn't stand at university. Every single piece of assessment when she was at university was, you five people go and do this assignment together. She couldn't stand it. She said, and what happened was that two of us did all the work and three of us did nothing, right? She said, and when we complained, the lecturer said, that's how it's going to be when you work. You've got to learn. What are you going to do? Sometimes it can be frustrating working with other people. That's, how many times have you heard it said the church would be a great place if it wasn't for all the people, right? If it wasn't for all those cantankerous people in the church. It'd be fantastic. We could have pure theology. 
But God calls us to work with each other, with our gifts, with our idiosyncrasies, our idiosyncrasies. All of us are individual and unique, and we need each other. We may not think we need each other, but we desperately need one another to achieve what God has for us in his plan for mission. Can't do it on our own. In fact, it's too daunting. When Jesus says, and that's what he said to the disciples, is the same that he had the same call that's on our life, go out, talk to people, tell them about the kingdom, heal the sick, throw out demons. I can't do that on my own. Impossible for me to do that. I don't have the courage, I don't have the strength. There's no way in the world that I would be able to do any of those things unless there was a team of people around me. And I'm not saying that some people don't have a particular gift in this or that, but I am saying we need to depend on one another, particularly when it comes to something as important as the call that Jesus put in our life. Go in mission. It's tough because going in mission is a difficult thing. In fact, telling people about Jesus can be the most daunting thing that we'll ever have to do. I know it frightens people. I don't know how many times I've had people say, I would love to be able to share my faith, but I'm terrified. Conversely, I've had people say, I've shared my faith with family members and all it does is put a wedge between us. And there's no way that I'm going to do that. Once bitten, twice shy. How can you expect me to talk to people about the gospel when I know the response, when I know that they're going to be agitated by it? God wouldn't ask me to do that. He wants families to be together. There's truth to that. But still, we hear this command from Jesus that's not just for those disciples, it's for us too. Us as a church, us as individuals to go, to be a people who bring the good news. Bring the good news that the kingdom of God is near. The question is, if we have not experienced God's presence and God's kingdom as good news, how can we then tell people about how fantastic it is? If we haven't got a testimony of our own that says, this is what God means to me. This is how I depend on God each day. This is how God gets me through. This is what I've experienced. This is what I've seen. Because Jesus doesn't want us to bring a script. He doesn't want us to walk up to somebody and say, have you met Jesus today? Is Jesus in your heart? Da, 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 da. He doesn't want us to read off a piece of paper. What he wants for us is to have a real, proper, meaningful encounter with him so that we can bring that to other people. Otherwise, we're hypocritical, aren't we? How can I speak of the greatness and the glory and the wonderful generosity of God if I don't really believe that myself? If I haven't really experienced that. So in some ways, this scripture today has two things that are really pointed. One of them is that we work together. We work together as a community to bring the good news. But secondly to be honest with ourselves and with each other about how things are between us and God. It's almost impossible for us to bring the good news to other people if there's still stuff that's not good between God and us. If we still have disappointments. If we don't feel like we've experienced the goodness, the grace, the love of God. 
And if that's the case, this is a good opportunity to say, look, Lord, I know you want me to be a bearer of the good news, but sometimes I'm struggling to see what the good news is. This is how I live every day. This is the pressure I've got, da, 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 and I'm wondering where is all the good news? Don't tell me you haven't thought that. Don't tell me you haven't thought that. You're human beings and so am I. So Jesus says to us, are you receiving freely? We focus so much about freely giving, but have you received everything that I want to give you? And have you received it freely? Do you recognize how powerful I am in your life? Have you recognized the gifts that I can and I'm willing to give you. You saw in the scripture before, Jesus says, pray. Pray for each other. Pray for our community. I would say even more, pray for a daily experience of God. One thing I can say for sure If we are not attentive to listening to God and if we don't put effort into listening for God and if we're not open to what he's doing, other things will come in and wash over that. Sometimes it's very hard to claim the space and say, this is the time, this is the space in my life where I'm going to experience God. This is going to be my sacred place or my sacred time where I'm going to set some time aside just to hear from God. If we don't do that and if we don't put a bit of effort into that, there'll be a million things that will happily claim that time and space. A million things. I've yet to hear somebody in all of my time as a pastor say, I have too much time on my hands. I just have too much Even after I've done everything I need to do and I pray, I've just got all this extra time. Never heard that. No one's ever said that to me. So what are we? The Lord is asking us today to examine ourselves. Examine ourselves in terms of, do we have a good news story to tell? That each of us have a story where we can say, I can see where God is at work. I can experience God in this situation. I have felt the touch of God in my life here. Because if we really haven't had that experience, it's going to be very difficult for us to share that with somebody else. And if we haven't, then today is a good time for us to pray for it. Today is a good time for us to come to the altar and say, Lord, this is what is burdening me. This this is the area in my life in which I need your touch. This is the place where I need you to be involved so that I can experience you. You know, David said that too in the Psalms. Don't let me be persecuted and knocked around. Let me experience you as a witness to everybody else. It's not completely selfish when we're asking for God to be involved in our life. First off, it's his will. Secondly, it's a testament to who he is and to his authority. So today's a good day for us to come. A good day for us to come and place these things Do we need a refreshing touch? Do we need to be healed in some way? Is there there pressure in our life in which, uh, in an area in our life in which we need God? Let's bring those things to God. And we're going to have an opportunity to do that in a moment. Um, During the prayers, we'll have a little bit of space where each one of us can bring those individual needs Yes, so that we can experience God, but secondly, so that we can have a legitimate testimony. A legitimate testimony pointing to the glory of God. Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, we thank you for your generosity. We are overwhelmed by your goodness. We do know how much you love us and we hang on to your promises. Yet oftentimes we allow the ravages and the pressures of day-to-day living to just overcome us. We pray that you would open and ex- open our heart and mind for an experience of you, that we would be able to bring glory to your name, that we can be authentic witnesses as you send us in mission. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.